What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So it feels like over the weekend, the floodgates sort of open when it comes to Switch 2 reports, specifically from accessory manufacturers. One in fact, just posted a bunch of details around Nintendo's next system on their website. So we'll take a look at that here today. Also, we will be going over disaster, absolutely striking escape from Tarkov after a new edition was announced that did not go over well with the community. And now we have the, the developers actually backtracking on that entire thing. And then we're also gonna be talking about Lost Soul Aside as it has now made another appearance and it looks like it could actually be coming sooner rather than later. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members for the channel do get Newswave early and ad free. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with Bethesda, Microsoft and Fallout 5. Now, this is an interesting one because of course the Fallout series has absolutely taken over online and people are going back to the older Fallout titles. So wouldn't it be nice if the next big mainline Fallout game came out in the next couple of years? That's kind of the dilemma Microsoft is facing currently since we know Bethesda's schedule right now has Elder Scrolls 6 directly in front of them after what of course they've done with Starfield. Well, we can see this is posted up over on Insider Gaming. They say on a recent episode of X Xbox 2 Podcast, Jez Corden claimed that the company is aware of the demand for the Fallout label, and everyone is acutely aware of how successful the next title in the series would be. At this point, one of the only avenues the company could take to speed up the development of Fallout 5 is to take it away from Bethesda Game Studios entirely. Now, they point out that the last time that happened with a major Fallout game was Fallout New Vegas, that of course being done by Obsidian, and many people look at that as their favorite Fallout game, so... It, it might not be a terrible idea for Microsoft to explore that. I know people will say, okay, well, we, we, we would like to see Fallout 5 from Bethesda. They, they have the most knowledge and experience developing those games. But, uh, I mean, how long do you want to wait for Fallout 5? That's the real question. Because Elder Scrolls 6, that might be one of the last games in the current Xbox Series generation. And then they would start working on Fallout 5. Guys, that could be like 2032, 2033. It... It'd be a while, so it might not be a bad idea at least to get some sort of production moving along or at least start it up with another studio. But the question, of course, becomes which studio? Also, sticking with Microsoft for a moment, Satya Nadella, of course, the CEO of just overall Microsoft, uh, did talk a bit about the Xbox branch of the company a bit. And in doing so, sort of alluded to the idea of just more games from their catalog going over to other platforms. We can see this is posted up over on VGC with Nadella saying, we are committed to meeting players where they are by bringing great games to more people on more devices. Now this was after talking about their seven or so placements in like the top selling games on PlayStation, which of course included things like Sea of Thieves being pre-ordered, Grounded, you had Hi-Fi Rush. Of course, we know all the different Fallout games technically are counted under them now, right? Uh, so looking at that, it's not shocking to hear that Nadella and I'm sure many other Xbox or Microsoft executives would be more than happy to start putting these games on other platforms because to them, the console exclusivity stuff doesn't make sense. But as we know, sort of in the landscape of consoles and exclusivity, that's sort of what's gotten all these consoles here in the first place. So it's still a traditional strategy that is used. And I'm sure Phil Spencer and Sarah Bond understand that. So it's that tug of war within Microsoft, but I do think we will see more and more of these first party games outside of the four so far that have shown up make their way to other platforms. Oh, and as we head into a summer of what should be a bunch of big game reveals and exciting events from different game companies, it looks like we can also expect to get some more information around Lollipop Chainsaw. This we can see is posted up by Gamatsu who was quote tweeting Yasuda saying, just to be clear, Yasuda saying, preparations are underway for Lollipop Chainsaw Repop's official reveal. The actual release is still set for the summer, which uh, I mean, summer, who knows? These these game release windows, of course, are always uh, hard to exactly pin down, but I, I figure this game would be out at, by September at the latest then, based on what they're saying here. And this seems perfectly timed for another Stellar Blade controversy, right? Well, we'll see. I mean, technically, Ch Lollipop Chainsaw already exists. This would just be like a, a remake or whatever for it. So I'm curious to see how that one turns out and maybe it'll show up at a, a Sony, a Microsoft, maybe at Summer Game Fest and we get a better look exactly at what they're doing here. Or who knows, maybe they just randomly drop the trailer on Twitter one day, we'll see. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with some of these Switch 2 reports that just started dropping online over the weekend. And a lot of this seemed to come from manufacturers for different accessories 
for the Switch, and of course, they would then want to make accessories for the next Nintendo system, which means they would need dimensions and a feel for the system, which apparently came way of them reaching inside of a concealed box to feel the system and see, I guess, dimensions for it. it. It's a very strange description exactly based on some of the recent reports, but one report is just outright coming from an accessory manufacturer and they first posted it up on their Facebook, which then got edited. Some people caught screenshots of it, but now they've just posted it up completely on their website, which seems very, very odd for an accessory manufacturer to do because that doesn't seem like something Nintendo would be thrilled with. Anyway, we can see this is posted up over on their website, and this is from MobaPad. They have this set up basically in bullet points, so we'll go through them. They say the Switch 2 will continue to support existing Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller. It's still equipped with the Alps Dual Axis Linear Motors for the HD Rumble. The cartridge slot of the Switch 2 will support backward compatibility with physical Switch game cartridges, ensuring compatibility with the player's existing game libraries, including digital versions. However, the second generation cartridges may not be compatible with the first generation console. So that's not surprising. It's kind of like the 3DS to the DS. There's a little notch there, so it doesn't really fit in correctly. So yeah, that's kind of how we all envision this working. If indeed backwards compatibility is there, as we're now hearing, that seems to be more and more likely. Say the new version of the Joy-Con has a larger volume and the sliding rail structure has been changed to magnetic suction. The SL and SR buttons are metal buttons. Magnetic suction is achieved through electromagnetic suction technology controlled by electric current. It's worth noting that in addition to the L, Z, L, R, and ZR buttons on the sides of the Joy-Con controller, a third button has been added on both the left and right sides. Additionally, below the home button on the right Joy-Con, there is another function button. That's interesting. I, I mean, we already have a share button. So underneath the home button, that's, hmm. I'm trying to figure out what that might be. Interesting, leave some, I guess, some theories down in the, the comments, but that could be maybe one of the big twists or features that Nintendo works into their to their next generation device. It says the bottom of the Switch 2 will still feature a USB-C port for docking, and the next generation dock will undergo minor changes in appearance while enhancing performance, supporting 4K resolution. Again, that's expected as Nintendo probably wants this to last another eight years. Something tells me that in eight years, you expect their system to at least do 4K by then. Uh, the new dock will feature a dampening or a damping bracket on the back, allowing for a greater range of adjustable angles. That's just essentially a a more fluid hinge that is stronger and able to essentially operate at any angle, which we kind of already have right now with the uh, the OLED, but I guess maybe to go even further than that, right? So like the next step for, I guess, just a hinge. Uh, the screen will be upgraded to an eight inch display supporting 1080p resolution. Now they do cite a lot of this information coming from supply chain and partners working with Nintendo for this device. Still though, that is a lot of information to just dump in one place and there is that sense of, okay, is is all of this their information? Or are they also gathering stuff from around the internet and kind of just lumping it together? Nonetheless, really to me, this just describes just a, a revision or a stronger version of the current system, which I feel like is what a lot of people were asking for. Not for Nintendo to get too crazy and weird with the whole thing, but kind of stay the course with the hybrid model and just build on top of what they have now, which also seems to include things like the Joy-Con, which is great news because that Joy-Con... Yeah, that, that definitely needs a revision or an upgrade just based on the stick drift alone, but also some of the limitations around whether it's the be able to grip the system if you have larger hands or even the travel of those sticks or even the triggers not being analog. So that's something I am very curious to see how that turns out. But 4K resolution, that being most likely, as we assume, upscaled. And then, of course, NVIDIA throwing their hat in the ring with what should be a highly customized chip. This should be an exciting system. When we finally see it, Nintendo's ready to talk about it because this is kind of what we've been working through this whole time. But hearing the Nintendo seems to be meeting with different accessory manufacturers and partners does kind of feel like we are working up to that release or that reveal, I should say, and then release, but that big reveal that people have just been waiting and waiting and waiting to see. Maybe June is uh, lining up for that or maybe it's later in the year, but if it's first half of 2025, Seems like we're months away from this happening and that'll be a very relieving day when it does. Next up, let's talk about a story that a ton of people messaged me about asking if we could cover this, take a look at it. And it has to do with Escape from Tarkov. And I've never really gotten into this extraction shooter, but I've been aware of it and I've seen clips and stuff being posted up and people talking about it here and there. But 
this story is absolutely ridiculous what was going on and let's start from the top as they did announce a new edition of the game which we can see here it's called the unheard edition okay so they have some extra features and different things added in here let's see we have guaranteed instant access to closed beta they have enhanced stash size 10 by 72 okay unique in-game id expanded pmc pockets increased fence standing more slots on the flea market the one though that really got I mean, everyone annoyed, and I, it, it makes sense. Access to PvE, or player versus enemy co-op mode, with persistent progression. Progression will not be reset with wipes. So, in this game, you essentially drop into a, a map, and you go through, you loot, you fight against other enemies, as well as AI-controlled enemies. And then you try to extract. If you die, you just lose what you had, right? You lose all the loot, everything, and you gotta restart. Okay, so, in this case... This co-op mode that is exclusive, again, as they announced this, to the $250 unheard of edition would allow you to just fight against AI-controlled enemies who would be more predictable and less random, we'll say, than an actual player running around the field. And then being able to just keep any of the stuff you've been able to gather and then obviously progress with. Yeah, that would give you a massive, massive advantage over everyone who has to deal with just a bunch of players. Now, there's a very good write-up that was done over on Forbes that goes through all of this as well as the updates. And it's pretty funny because it almost looks like the, the studio was kind of bartering with the fans on this one as they sort of came back and forth just trying to give different offers. But the, the the reason people were so frustrated by this, right? Not only, obviously, it's a $250 edition that adds in what many people look at as downloadable content. You know, it's a new mode that is highly beneficial. This is despite the fact that anyone who purchased the old Edge of Darkness edition was promised all future DLC content as part of the season pass. Which, I mean, it's a new mode. So that, that's, that's future DLC, right? That's content. Well, they also sort of met halfway and said, you know what? If you just give us an extra 100 or $150 or so, you can then get on board with this DLC, or the, I'm sorry, this addition. So they kind of prorated it a bit. Still didn't go over well, as you would expect. Well, then we also had the lead community manager at Battlestate Games, of course, the, the studio behind Escape from Tarkov, saying, it ain't DLC, it's unique feature of the new edition added, saying DLC means additional downloadable content. PvE is a feature and a game mode. Just because you all want it to become a DLC, it wouldn't mean it is one. It's featured game mode for the new edition of the game. <laughs> to me, that just seems like you're playing around with words and just trying to have it make sense for you releasing the $250 edition after saying previously that all content going forward, which to me would include feature sets and modes, just being free for people. Essentially, you bought into the $100 edition or $150 edition way back when. Well, as I mentioned, there were updates to the situation. It's mostly been resolved. Mostly. But, like, you can see the updates that were posted up by Forbes as they were covering it line by line as it was happening. So, what we had was the, uh, the early edition for Edge of Darkness, that being access to the new PvE mode for free, but only for six months. After which the mode will return to being exclusive to the $250 Unheard Edition. Okay. So less than a day later, we have, uh, after further backlash, Tarkov developers have announced plans to give PvE mode to owners, the Edge of Darkness Edition, when Tarkov exits beta and hits 1.0. Okay, then the next day, they've now apologized for the controversy over the last few days and announced that Edge of Darkness Edition owners will get the PvE mode before launch with the first waves of invites going out as soon as they can scale up servers but the big thing here is uh, there was a ton of backlash while this was going on and again they're essentially bartering with the community as to how they can really get you to that 250 dollars edition without making it feel like you got ripped off for that 100 150 dollars edition you bought previously the biggest issue here is now people would look at this studio completely differently because uh, you feel like you'd lose trust completely then with that like they just tried to pull a $250 edition and lock a, what would be, a, again, a highly beneficial mode behind that paywall and then say it's not DLC. So, seems like they, they're okay working around words and terminology with these different modes and features. It's hard to imagine they wouldn't try that again sometime in the future because clearly... They, they're trying to raise money here, and this would be a way for them to do it, putting that kind of content behind that paywall. But let me know what you guys thought about all this down below, especially if you're someone who was really in the Escape from Tarkov like community, kind of seeing this unfold 
over the weekend. And if you're happy with really the resolution, I guess they've come up with here. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Lost Soul Aside. This is a game that was first announced back in 2016 and has since become part of Sony's China Hero Project, which is an incubation like program for up and coming titles and Lost Soul Aside, as we have recently seen, it was just like a year ago where they showed off new gameplay and trailer. I think looks really, really cool and does have a lot of potential. It's been in development for a while, but it started off, I think, with one person. It's kind of built up from there. And now we can see this is posted up by Daniel Ahmad, who noticed this one, saying this means the game has been reviewed and can officially launch in mainland China. In other words, there will be news for the launch of the game fairly soon, at least within the next three months or so, typically. This was quoting Lost Soul Aside, saying Lost Soul Aside got an Isbin license approval to release in China. And this seems primed and ready to be announced at Sony's next event. And I feel like that's happening at the end of May. So less than a month, at least I figure, we should have some sort of showcase for Sony. And Lost Soul aside, I feel like will be there and maybe even be one of their big announcements as, again, it's looked really, really good every time they've shown it with the most recent showing that really big gameplay piece was really cool to see. So yeah, I'm excited to at least get an idea as to what we're dealing here, here with more for Lost Soul aside, especially with some of the story and maybe some of the other elements when it comes to the combat. So we'll keep an eye out for this one towards the end of May when we hopefully get PlayStation's big showcase. And before we go to the comment of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I ask, for Switch owners, have you used the single Joy-Con Play controller mode? Okay, 15% say yes, I split up Joy-Cons frequently for multiplayer. 59% say yes, but only a few times. Then 25% say no, I've never used single Joy-Con Play. So there's a large number of people who have never used, 85% apparently, who really don't use it that much at all. So it's unfortunate because that feature, that idea from Nintendo, which... I'm sure in theory, they said, this is great. They take the switch with them and the people pop the joy cons off and you have two players right then and there. Yeah. But we also lost the D pad sort of for that. I mean, it's on the switch light because there are no separable joy cons. So in my mind, for me personally, if there was a D pad equipped joy con, I would just buy that and get rid of the other one or like put the other one in a drawer somewhere and just leave that attached at all times. Because to me, Losing the D-pad isn't necessarily worth the split Joy-Con mode, mostly because I really never use it. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day. We'll start with this one here. This is from Daniel. It says, visualizing a young spawn, spawn wave renting Superman 64 for a weekend made my morning. That wasn't even the worst rental I've ever done. I've talked about like Mario is missing, which ended up being an education game. Who wants to, who wants to rent a learning game for the weekend after you've been at school all week learning. You don't want to do that. It's, it's, like a, it's like an eight or nine year old or whatever. But the one that I remember being really frustrated by was Batman Forever. Because early in the game, you're, you're, you get to this point where you don't know what to do. And I never got past it as a kid. But later on, as an adult, I went back and figured it out. And it's this, this point where you have to use the grappling hook and shoot it above you to go through the ceiling. You pressed, I believe, start to do that. I was never going to figure that out <laughs> as like a seven or eight year old kid with no internet access at the time to look it up. It just, that was it. I rented it. I played it for 30 minutes and then sat in that position trying to figure out what to do the rest of the weekend and it never came together. What a shame. And then we'll go to a comment from the members video. This is posted up by Jimmy who says, I have to wonder if Valve politely asking Nintendo for permission to list Dolphin on Steam led to Nintendo becoming more aware of Nintendo IPs on Gary's mod. You know, it is possible. I mean, I feel like Nintendo is mostly aware of a lot of the stuff going on online with their intellectual properties as they do hire a number of people and lawyers and really look around and figure this stuff out. But it wouldn't shock me if they just became more aware of Steam as a platform to sort of allow like the modified content like that. Because a lot of us are trying to figure out why now that Nintendo would go out, find Gary's mod and be like, okay, yeah, this has to come down. It's like, it's been up there for like almost decades now. And th now is the time to do it. It, it does seem very, very weird, but hey, maybe that is the reasoning after Dolphin tried to make the push the steam. Maybe, maybe Nintendo then started taking a look around. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's the different reports around the Switch 2 that came out over the weekend? And what do you think that extra button 
below the home button would be for on the new system from Nintendo. And then also what about the Escape from Tarkov stuff and Lost Soul aside, are you interested in seeing more about it? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.